So our next talk is uh, efficient IBE with type reduction to standard assumption in the multi-challenge setting. And the speaker is Jun Qing Gong. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my talk is about how to construct efficient IB with tight reduction to standard assumption in the multi-challenge setting. And the title is somewhat too long, so I first explain some terms in the title. So the first is identity-based identity encryption. So um, it, is a, it is an encryption system with an, an authority uh, which publish a master public key and uh, and issue the secret key for every user. Uh, in order to encrypt the message, uh, the user need to know the master public key and the user ID. Uh, so in such a system, we want to resist a, uh, such a kind of adversary, which hold uh, the master public key and uh, can know some review the keys from the user. So here is the formal definitions. Um, there, 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 is a, there are two uh, query phrase allow the, allow the adversary to ask some, uh, some secret key. And uh, there is another challenge phrase allow the adversary to, to touch the, the cipher text. And the, the second term is uh, type reduction. Um, in order to prove security over IV scheme, we always want to construct an, a solver for the hard problem uh, from an adversary against the IB scheme. But the reduction may have some loss, so here is a large adversary and this is a small one, which is, uh, which this one is stronger. And uh, so the tighter means a smaller reduction loss, and uh, which means some better theoretical result and uh, maybe have some positive impact on the implementation. So this one is uh, our, our, our main topic, how to, how to uh, extend to the multi-challenge setting. So the concept is uh, quite easy. It is uh, basic, just that we have reviewed, uh, which is what we call single challenge setting plus some um, uh, enhancement. So the first is we allow the multiple challenge query. So the adversary is allowed to touch more than one challenge ciphertext. Another is we allow the multiple instance, so it attack uh, more than one IB instance at the same time. So here is a picture show there is uh, many, many query phrase, challenge phrase, and interleave that. So the good news is um, an IB scheme which is secure in the single challenge setting is also probably secure in the multi-challenge setting, which you would just use the standard hybrid argument. But the bad news is this trivial implication is not tightness preserving. So if we have a uh, tightly secure IB scheme in a single challenge setting, uh, its uh, trivial extension is not tight. So maybe we, we need to do some more work to, to deal with this problem. So we talk about our motivation. Uh, currently, we have several uh, schemes. The first two is in the single challenge, mo single challenge model, and uh, there are four in the multi-challenge model. So, so we focus on these four, and uh, this the last three is constructed using the the more efficient prime order bilinear group. But in the last two the dimension, the scheme based on the standard assumption is not quite efficient, but the the two efficient one need. Uh, somewhat stronger assumption. So here it seems to be a trade-off. So we asked the question, can we, can, we, can we find a scheme with short ciphertext under the standard, standard assumption? So our strategy is an observation that current scheme in the multi-change world is extended from this paper, Chen Wei, uh, at uh, Crypto30. So and another observation is 
a recent paper proposed a over-time base skill IB, which is more efficient than their work. So why not start from this one? And uh, is it possible? And uh, will the resulting scheme be more efficient? So we first review their work. They actually propose a framework which transform a, a fine Mac to an IB relying on uh, proof systems. So we just uh, see the, the one of the concrete scheme which is highly skewed. The secret key is consists of a, a, a ta map tag for the ID and uh, the X and th this one X is the secret key for the, t for, for the Mac which is, uh, which is committed to in the, in the master public key like that. So another part of secret key is a proof showing that this is a legal tag. So although they use the dual system technique, but there, there is a problem. So um, the normal and the semi-function space is not quite obvious. And so we don't know how to uh, employ existing extension method to extend this, this scheme to the, to the multi-challenger setting. So our first work is to uh, revisit the BKP IV scheme in order to give a clean and, uh, and uh, something we can work on. So the clue is, is in the proof. So the first, the first step of the proof is transform the ciphertext into this form, which attached uh, something here using the k-linear assumption. And the next step is a simple substitution, which changed the uh, the proof part of the secret key into this form, which, which there is no y. It, so there is an observation, which is using the proof. Uh, there is no y here, and so z and x are in uh, into independent space. Uh, we want to say it's not quite formal. We just uh, see it, OK? So we can see, consider z is in the normal space, x in the semi-function space. So keep it in mind, we can rewrite their, their scheme like that. So first, we do not consider this as a Mac, just to forget the, the generic transformation. So this is the randomness, and we write the, the other two parts together to, to remove the Y and put the Z and X in it. And we, we know Z and X are independent, this is invertible, so we can sample this directly using, using a W. So we actually define the z and x. So finally, we can reach such a form, which is uh, uh, maybe quite simple. At, at least it's simple for, for me to work on. So, so we give a picture like that. I guess um, this picture has appeared in, in yesterday's invited talk by Hotek. So actually, it is quite similar to CGW, this paper which is published in Eurocrypto. So we want to say is, is it just uh, simple? No. Uh, actually, someone asked me why BKP is more better than CW. I just told him it is a new, new scheme, so, so, not, so nothing I can tell. But actually, with this similarity, we can say something more. So the first thing we can notice is that the secret key is much more simple because we do not need a parameter hiding property here. And the thickness thing is the matrix here is smaller because uh, they actually use a more powerful tools to, to realize the nested hiding indistinguishability. So there they just need to hide the k-unit entropies here. So at least we can give more two reasons for that question. So. Uh, the, the discussion above is quite not formal, so, so we want to have some formal things. So we have this uh, system, dual system group, which describes the normal space and semi-functional space in a quite formal form. And uh, we know that CW13 is extended from CW14. They are similar, so they have some, some, some results like that. So we found our simplified BKP is also similar to a instantiation of dual system group. So can we put this in the framework of this, this con concept? So 
it's quite fortunately we can do that with, with some simple generalization. So we first generalize the nested dual system group and uh, realize it, which is motivated by GKP14 and the CGW15. So we realize it using a, a prime order group. So this imply an IB, which is exactly the simplified BKP we have shown, we have shown before. So have the have the first result. Uh, we thought we can go to go to extend this this one to the multi channel setting. So here we have a new start point instead of this one. So we also ask this question: Is it possible to extend this simplified BKP to the multi channel setting, and will it be more efficient? Um, actually, with with our work, so it's it's quite simple to extend. We use these two paper, the technique in these two paper, which include the the dimension expansion. So we extend the k plus one two three k. Um, and uh, the second part is is defined basis for three space, uh, which is normal space and uh, hat semi-functional space to the semi-functional space. So uh, given this space and uh, this space, we just uh, review the part of entropy of W and uh, we use the leftover entropy in the W to, to prove the nested hiding property here. So that's the point. And uh, so you can see that our extension is quite simple and uh, just uh, actually follow previous technique. So uh, why the existing scheme is, uh, why the resulting system is more efficient? So here's the picture. At l uh, actually, these two parties really enlarged. Uh, it, they, they become three K dimension vectors, but these two parts remain unchanged. Even even the matrix A and the matrix B is become more larger. So that is the reason. So uh, in, previ uh, in previous I extension, uh, both part is uh, will be extended. So formally, we we do the following things. We start from our uh, first technical result. First, use our PKC paper to extend to a generalized extended nested dual group dual system group, which may support the uh, proof in the multi channel setting. And uh, we extended the primordial extension to this one using this paper, and it realized uh, the net the this uh, extended nested dual system group. And together we got our, we get our main construction. So this is the pic big picture we now, we now have. So we give a, a comparison and a discussion. So, so this th this paper give the uh, give a, a construction which is uh, w w which is the best in both four dimensions. And uh, maybe we start here. So uh, actually, they just uh, proved from the standard assumption, and uh, actually the ciphertext has the same length. So it may be not quite interesting if we just uh, just uh, do this work for these reasons. So we give a more concrete comparison. Uh, why we need to need to pursue a scheme under the standard assumption because we can we can set the k to be one, which is maybe a strong assumption, but which which will lead a real improvement. So this is this need a element, a element, and we need only four elements. So. And when we compare to these two scheme in the single challenge model, we can see that uh, we actually pay uh, one group element to to achieve this more more stronger model. So uh, we summarize uh, our work. Our work is in two steps. The first step is revisit the BKP and BKP IV which actually provide a new instantiations of the generalized nested dual group, dual group system, a uh, dual system group. And we can, so we can compare these two schemes in a more clear way. 
And uh, the second step is to extend the simplified version to the multi-channel setting, which achieves the short cipher text. Also, actually, uh, the, uh, the, asap, uh, the aspect of the performance and the, and the standard assumption. So this leads to the most efficient concrete constructions. And additionally, we actually consider the weak, uh, weak anonymous features. So we don't, uh, we won't cover it in this talk. Um, okay, that's all. Thank you. Is there any questions or comments? Uh, does your result naturally lead to HIVs too? No. Ah, okay. No HIV. Uh, what's going to be the major obstacle when you want to do HIV with multi-channel in ciphertext? So you you talk about the GKP HIV. Uh, did their proof maybe has some flaws? You know? uh, can you say it again? Their proof has some flaw. Uh, okay. Uh, but in general, like, uh, what's the difficulty in making it work? Uh, we actually not consider this problem. Actually, um, um, tight tightness is more considered in the setting of IV. So the tight uh, the tight security in the HIV is also a big problem. So it's it's maybe far from <laughs> considered in the multi multi instance setting or something. Uh, okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? So let's thank uh, Jingxin again.